math, and science. The dichotomy between those good at math and science and those bad at it is stark and getting starker. Students who are bad at these subjects not only have difficulty with the subject matter, but the experts tasked to help them are usually people who are good at them and cannot relate to them at all. Experts on math and science are rarely experts on how to teach. Even for those students that are naturally good at math, there is still a danger because when they hit a wall, they are less likely than the bad students to know what to do with their frustration. Their love for the subject may motivate them to work, or they may thread through the areas that remain easy for them, avoiding the others. What about AI? These days, students don't even have to work a problem. They can just ask AI to solve it for them. Using AI to solve a problem is great if you don't need to know how to solve the problem. However, if you've described the problem wrong to AI, you'll never know it, and you'll accept the wrong answer. That may be okay on a test, but if you're ever in charge of explosives on a building demolition, someone could die if you mess up. Using AI also means you never learned anything about the problem at all. You wanted a cookie, so you asked AI to give you one, and it did. You'll ask AI every time you want a cookie. What you didn't know was there's a bag of cookies in the cupboard, and all you had to do is get the bag. Then you don't need to ask for each and every cookie. Sure, I get it. You don't like math and just want to get through. But what if you actually could get good at math? What if you actually liked it? Then you could use what you know to ask AI much better questions like, how do I bake cookies that will make me the most popular person in the world? The difficulties in learning math. Here are the difficulties in math. Conceptual, the idea. Symbolic, the notation and vocabulary. Procedural, the sport. Conceptual is about knowing what you're trying to do. Procedural is knowing how to do it. Both conceptual and procedural are dependent on an ability to translate ideas into vocabulary and symbols and back again. The symbol sets, that awful math notation, are what make math powerful and generalizable, but also what make it impossible to understand for many learners. Attention must be paid to all three difficulties, which must be understood as separate learning issues. It can be encouraging for students to realize they are good at at least one of these domains and are not complete failures. It can also be helpful for them to understand exactly what their difficulties are so they can address them. If a student is understanding the concept of addition just fine because they get how you can add two cookies to two cookies, then there is no need to explain it. Perhaps they are unclear on how to add larger numbers because they do not understand the symbolic representation of the way the numbers are set up to be added, with numbers carrying. Or perhaps they are unclear on the actual procedure of adding two large numbers. Most math instruction focuses on the procedure to the exclusion of the other two. Procedures are akin to sports and can be practiced just like sports. Skill and drill isn't wrong, it's just incomplete. Students are not going to automatically understand a concept just because they can enact a skill, and they are going to be hampered in practicing a skill if they lack the concept and a comfort with the symbols. Getting help on this area can be difficult, as symbol and concept are the water that good math people swim in like fishes. Good math people often take it for granted that everyone can handle math symbols once they see them, and that the procedure is the only problem to solve. Asking for clarity on concept or symbol vocabulary may help, and if such help is not forthcoming by the teacher, then it becomes clear that students and parents will have to work hard on their own to get this information some other way, such as a coach. They must level up so that they can have a basic conversation about the subject with the teacher. A sample problem and the issues associated with it. What follows is a simple problem and all the things that you need as a learner in order to understand it. Spoiler alert, for a simple problem, there's a lot to understand. I wouldn't be surprised if after reading this, you get discouraged and decided that it's too much trouble to think about everything. Well, maybe. It's not for me to say whether or not you want to go to the trouble to really learn something. All I can say is if you want to get your work done without stress, 
This may be what you'll have to do. It could be tiring. Maybe you'll feel foolish or stupid for a while. But with help, you can get it. And then you'll realize you're capable. And that might end up making you feel good. The point is, if you're going to understand math, you really have to know a lot of things first. And there's no way to get around them. The good news is that if you're thorough and you really learn the basics, you can use what you learn again and again for every problem. I want to give you a shot at feeling good about yourself around math, so hang in there with me. In the example below, when we want to multiply two numbers, we're using the asterisk instead of the x to show times or multiplying. Because in algebra, we use x for something else. So 3 asterisk 4 equals 12. That is, 3 times 4 equals 12. Here's an example math problem. 7 equals x over 6. Solve for x. Part 1, Algebra, the Concept. This is the underlying idea that makes it possible for us to solve this problem. Think of an army from one country entering another country and attacking. Depending on which country is telling the story, you have either an invading force or a liberating army. The same thing is happening. Army goes in, people fight. But it's being described in two different ways. Both may be true. And the way we choose to describe it has to do with what side we're on and what we want. Algebra makes use of this idea. As learners, we start with the idea that we have to figure out an answer. 7 times 6 is blank. We have to know what goes in the blank. Algebra takes it up a notch. It calls the blank by its own name, like x. When you do that, you make the blank into something more than an answer you're looking for. It becomes a Lego piece that can be moved around. 7 times 6 equals x. This answers the question, how much will I have? That says if you have seven boxes of candy with six pieces per box, you have x pieces of candy in all, and that number turns out to be 42. But by the operations of algebra, we can move those numbers and letters around so that it says something else but still means the same thing. Like this. 7 equals x over 6. This answers the question, how much will I get? Written this way, it tells us something about the number 7. If you have x pieces of candy, for example, 42, and you divide it between six friends, each friend will get seven pieces. The same situation looked at from two different perspectives. 7 times 6 equals x, war of liberation, and 7 equals x over 6, invading force. This is really useful, because as math gets more complex, sometimes describing a problem one way makes it really hard to see, but looking at it another way makes it easy to see. For example, you're walking to the store, which is two blocks away, and you have to cross the street. You can either cross first, where there's no traffic light, and then walk two blocks, or you can walk two blocks to the traffic light and then cross. Same trip, two ways to make it. Which way would be easier for you? If you understand the concept of algebra, you'll feel better about having to use it to solve a problem. Part 2. Algebra, the notation. These are the particular notation tools you need to solve our problem. x is an unknown thing. In beginning algebra, it's usually a number, and it could be any number. We don't have to use x. We could use a smiley face, or a balloon, or a blank. It's just tradition to use x. Imagine two kids, twin siblings, and you're the parent. If you give one of them something, you have to give the other one something of the same value or they'll fight. When you have two numbers on either sides of an equal sign, the two kids, one named 3 plus 4 and the other named 7, you can do whatever you like to one of the numbers if you do the same to the other one. It's like a scale that has to balance. 3 plus 4 equals 7. Multiply 6 on one side, and you have to multiply it on the other side. 3 plus 4 times 6 equals 7 times 6. This seems obvious, but it's surprisingly useful. You'll see why down below. Whenever you have a fraction with the same number on the top as on the bottom, that fraction can be replaced by the number 1. 7 over 7 equals 1. 
943 divided by 943 equals 1. That's useful because anything multiplied by 1 is itself, so you can make a lot of numbers go away. 6 times 7 over 7 is the same as 6 times 1 is the same as 6. When you multiply a simple fraction by a counting number, you can write it two ways. 7 over 6 times 6 can also be written as 7 times 6 over 6. Both of these mean the exact same thing. If you understand these rules and can use them, you can practice the sports skill of the problem with greater ease. Part 3, Algebra the Operation. You get an example problem. You see an algebra equation, 7 equals x over 6. You're asked to figure out what x is. The hard way is to figure out what divided by 6 equals 7. Even if you have a calculator, you might not know how to use it in that situation. The easier way is to use algebra to move the numbers around to get x by itself on one side of the equal sign. Here's how we do it using our notation tools. Multiply both sides of the equation by 6, which we learned from our notation tools. 7 times 6 equals x over 6 times 6. From our notation rules above about rewriting fractions, this is the same thing as 7 times 6 equals x times 6 over 6. This means we can get rid of 6 over 6 from our notation rules. We end up with 7 times 6 equals x. Then it's easy to figure out what x is with or without a calculator. 7 times 6 is blank. Do this problem step by step just as described. Take each instruction and copy it exactly the way I did it. Do that as many times as it takes for you to feel comfortable with all the steps. Can you do it from memory? Where do you get stuck? What places confuse you? Once you can make it through all the steps of the problem easily without getting stuck, you're ready to try other problems just like it. Some people will figure out how to do problems that are just a little different from it, and others will have trouble with that. Tutoring and coaching can help bridge that gap. About science. Some science uses lots of math. Some uses very little, but has lots of concepts. Some has lots of vocabulary. If you've had some experience getting better at math with its even mix of concept, vocabulary, and skill, you'll be able to enter and survive a world that will greatly empower you, maybe financially, maybe as a person, maybe to help you change the world.